Hyperspace is a faster-than-light method of traveling used in science fiction. It is typically described as an alternative sub-region of space co-existing with our own universe which may be entered using an energy field or other device. As seen in most fiction hyperspace is most succinctly described as a somewhere else within which the laws of general and special relativity decidedly do not apply, especially with respect to the speed of light being the cosmic speed limit. Entering and exiting said, elsewhere, thus directly enables travel near or faster than the speed of light, almost universally with the aid of extremely advanced technology through hyperspace, that unimaginable region that was neither space nor time, matter nor energy, something nor nothing, one could traverse the length of the galaxy in the interval between two neighboring instants of time." Astronomical distances and the impossibility of faster-than-light travel pose a challenge to most science fiction authors. They can be dealt with in several ways, accept them as such hibernation, slow boats, generation ships, time dilation, the crew will perceive the distance as much shorter and thus flight time will be short from their perspective, find a way to move faster than light warp drive, fold, space to achieve instantaneous translation e.g. the Dune universe's Holtzman effect, access some sort of shortcut wormholes, utilize a closed timelike curve e.g. Strauss singularity sky, or sidestep the problem in an alternate space, hyperspace, with spacecraft able to use hyperspace sometimes said to have a hyperdrive. Detailed descriptions of the mechanisms of hyperspace travel are often provided in stories using the plot device, sometimes incorporating some actual physics such as relativity or string theory. Authors may develop alternative names for hyperspace in their works, such as the immaterium used in Warhammer 40,000, Z-space in Animorphs, or Underspace. U space, commonly referred to in the works of Neil Asher. Topic: Normal space. In normal 3D space, the shortest path between two events A and B is by traveling in a straight line. Because of relativity, there is no such thing as universal time, so let the time be measured with respect to a clock whose motion matches the space-time path. Call this space-time path P. Then the shortest path in space is simply the path in space traced by the space-time path P. In strict mathematical terms, it may be impossible to define such a path, along which matter can travel. However, it usually is possible to find an infinite sequence of paths that converge uniformly to some limit, that is, some limiting path. Of course, under relativity, matter may not be able to travel along this limiting path, but light can travel along this path. In fact, the path of the light beam from A to B is the theoretical limit. No ship in normal space could follow the path of light in 4D space-time, but it can get arbitrarily close until the energy required to go any faster exceeds the energy available. This path, or limiting path may not be unique, there may be many shortest paths. Also, no path may exist, for example, suppose A lies in a black hole and B lies outside the black hole, since nothing can exit a black hole, such a path would not exist. Finally, because of general relativity, this path is not a straight line in the strict Euclidean sense, but is curved. 
For example, if we aimed a rocket at the Moon traveling near the speed of light, the shortest path to the Moon is still a curved path. In fact, even if we aimed a photon of light at the Moon, it will follow a curved path, since gravity bends all things. The space along which the photon travels is, in fact, curved because gravity curves space itself. Just like traveling along the surface of water, if the surface of the water is swelled in a wave, then it would still be possible to travel in a straight line through the water, traveling underneath the wave, but it would require more effort than just traveling along the curved surface of the water. It is still possible to travel in a straight line to the Moon, yet since the curved light beam is the best, the curved path close to this beam following the path of the curved space is better than the straight path. This is because the light beam is technically actually traveling in a straight line, relative to the curved space it is traveling in, but the space itself is curved, so it appears to an outside observer that the light beam is traveling in a curved line. Of course, if we take energy expenditures into account, then the minimum energy paths are just transfer orbits and gravity boosts that Earth space agencies predominantly use although these are not fast. <laughs> Travel Generally speaking, the idea of hyperspace relies on the existence of a separate and adjacent dimension. When activated, the hyper drive shunts the starship into this other dimension, where it can cover vast distances in an amount of time greatly reduced from the time it would take in normal space. Once it reaches the point in hyperspace that corresponds to its destination in real space, it re-emerges. In other words, some or all paths in hyperspace may have a travel time less than the time it takes to traverse the shortest path in normal space, defined above. The time it takes to travel in hyperspace is measured in the same way time is measured in normal space, unless the hyperspace is discontinuous. For example, the path in hyperspace may not be smooth but a sequence of points, and the time change from jumping from one point to another may be abrupt. In this case, add the time jumps. Some may be positive jumps to the future, and some negative jumps to the past, depending on how the hyperspace is defined. Explanations of why ships can travel faster than light in hyperspace vary. Hyperspace may be smaller than real space and therefore a star ship's propulsion seems to be greatly multiplied, or else the speed of light in hyperspace is not a barrier as it is in real space. Whatever the reasoning, the general effect is that ships traveling in hyperspace seem to have broken the speed of light, appearing at their destinations much more quickly and without the shift in time that the theory of relativity would suggest. In much science fiction, hyperdrive jumps require a considerable amount of planning and calculation, with any error carrying a threat of dire consequences. Therefore, jumps may cover a much shorter distance than would actually be possible so that the navigator can stop to look around, take their bearings, plot their position, and plan the next jump. Maneuvering in hyperspace may or may not be possible. The time it takes to travel in hyperspace also varies. Travel may be instantaneous or may take hours, days, weeks, or more. Some theories state that a route traveled for a long time may continuously stay open. A different concept, sometimes also referred to as hyperspace, and similarly used to explain FTL travel in fiction, is that the manifold of ordinary three-dimensional space is curved in four or more higher spatial dimensions, a hyperspace 
In the geometric sense, see hypersurface, tesseract, flatland. This curvature causes certain widely separated points in three-dimensional space to nonetheless be «adjacent» to each other four-dimensionally. Creating an aperture in 4D space a wormhole between these locations can allow instantaneous transit between the two locations. A common comparison is that of a folded piece of paper, where a hole punched through two folded sections is more direct than a line drawn between them on the sheet. This idea probably arose out of certain popular descriptions of general relativity and or Riemannian manifolds, and may be the original form from which later concepts of hyperspace arose. This form often restricts FTL travel to specific jump points. A difficulty with interstellar travel through hyperspace is navigation. At small distances like the local solar neighborhood, the astronomical background cartography will not have changed much and coordinates can be extrapolated. However, as the distance traveled increases, the background cartography changes more dramatically. If slower than light speed were used for travel through normal space, it would be easy to record the change in the cartography, but because the view of the cartography is hidden when in hyperspace, it is impossible to keep a record simply by visual reconciliation alone. Science fiction has myriad solutions to this problem. Early depictions Though the concept of hyperspace did not emerge until the 20th century, stories of an unseen realm outside our normal world are part of earliest oral tradition. Some stories, before the development of the science fiction genre, feature space travel using a fictional existence outside what humans normally observe. In Somnium, published 1634, Johannes Kepler tells of travel to the Moon with the help of demons. From the 1930s through to the 1950s, many stories in the science fiction magazines, Amazing Stories and Astounding Science Fiction introduced readers to hyperspace as a fourth spatial dimension. Kirk Meadowcroft's The Invisible Bubble 1928 and John Campbell's Islands of Space 1931 features an early reference to hyperspace in John Buchan's Ruritanian romance novel The House of the Four Winds 1935 the young Scotsman John Jakey Galt is said to know less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 less about women than he knew about the physics of hyperspace writers of stories in magazines used the hyperspace concept in various ways in the mystery of element 117 1949 by milton smith a window is opened into a new hyperplane of hyperspace containing those who have already died on Earth. In Arthur C. Clarke's Technical Error 1950, a man is laterally reversed by a brief accidental encounter with hyperspace. Hyperspace travel became widespread in science fiction, because of the perceived limitations of FTL travel in ordinary space. In E. E. Smith's Grey Lensman 1939, a fifth-order drive allows travel to anywhere in the universe while hyperspace weapons are used to attack spaceships. In Nelson Bond's The Scientific Pioneer Returns 1940, the hyperspace concept is described. Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, first published between 1942 and 1944 in Astounding, featured a galactic empire traversed through hyperspace. 
Asimov's short story Little Lost Robot 1947 features a hyperatomic drive shortened to hyperdrive and observes that fooling around with hyperspace isn't fun topic <laughs> <laughs> popular depictions in science fiction By the 1950s, hyperspace travel was established as a typical means for traveling. Many stories feature hyperspace as a dangerous place, and others require a ship to follow set hyperspatial highways. Hyperspace is often described as being an unnavigable dimension where straying from a preset course can be disastrous. In some science fiction, the danger of hyperspace travel is due to the chance that the route through hyperspace may take a ship too close to a celestial body with a large gravitational field, such as a star. In such scenarios, if a starship passes too close to a large gravitational field while in hyperspace, the ship is forcibly pulled out of hyperspace and reverts to normal space. Therefore, certain hyperspace «routes» may be mapped out that are safe, not passing too close to stars or other dangers. Starships in hyperspace are sometimes depicted isolated from the normal universe, they cannot communicate with nor perceive things in real space until they emerge. Often there can be no interaction between two ships even when both are in hyperspace. This effect can be used as a plot device, because they are invisible to each other while in hyperspace, ships will encounter each other most often around contested planets or space stations. Hyperdrive may also allow for dramatic escapes as the pilot jumps to hyperspace in the midst of battle to avoid destruction. In many stories, for various reasons, a starship cannot enter or leave hyperspace too close to a large concentration of mass, such as a planet or star. This means that hyperspace can only be used after a starship gets to the outside edge of a solar system, so the starship must use other means of propulsion to get to and from planets. The reasons given for such restrictions are usually technobabble, but their existence is just a plot device allowing for interstellar policies to actually form and exist. Science fiction author Larry Niven published his opinions to that effect in N Space. According to him, such an unrestricted technology would give no limits to what heroes and villains could do. In fact, every criminal would have the ability to destroy colonies, settlements and indeed whole worlds without any chance of stopping him. Other writers have limited access to hyperspace by requiring a very large expenditure of energy in order to open a link sometimes called a jump point between hyperspace and normal space. This effectively limits access to hyperspace to very large starships, or to large stationary jump gates that can open jump points for smaller vessels. These restrictions are often plot devices to prevent starships from easily escaping by slipping into hyperspace, thus ensuring epic space battles. Hyperspace is often depicted as blue, pulsing with Cherenkov radiation. An example of this is the jump technology as seen in Babylon 5. In addition, a jump point into hyperspace is seen as yellowish in color because of the redshift effect, and jump points leading out of hyperspace are seen as blue. Only large starships and jump gates can create jump points, as well as the Vorlan enhanced white star ship. Detailed depictions are listed below. Albedo, Irma Felna 
In the science fiction anthropomorphic comic book series by Steve Galachi (1983–2005), starships use a hyperspace drive that translates the vessel into a parallel universe where distances are vastly shorter. The hazard of this usage being that matter in the parallel universe cannot exist above the most basic elements and most physical mass sent into the hyperspace dimension begins to decay. Thus a jump must be very short or the crew risks exposure to intense levels of radiation from themselves and the ship and must take a period after each jump to recover. During wartime though a ship may be forced to make several jumps in quick succession, or one longer jump which puts the crew's health at increasing risk of radiation poisoning. One entry mentions a ship exploding in a nuclear burst upon re-entry into normal space after a dangerous long-distance jump. Other ships never return from hyperspace and are assumed to have disintegrated. Topic: Animorphs. In the science fiction book series Animorphs, written by K. A. Applegate, hyperspace is called zero space, Z space, and is a white nothingness in which nothing exists, not even the stray molecules in real space. Zero space is another universe almost, and in Z space the normal laws of physics do not apply so you can easily travel faster than light FTL. Hyperspace travel is called Z space travel and ships use Z space engines to achieve FTL travel. Zero space is also used to store the extra mass when someone is morphing into something smaller than themselves such as an ant, and is used to hold the matter drawn from when they morph into something bigger than themselves e.g. an elephant. It was wrongly thought by Andalite scientists that, in Z space, matter by a person morphing was stored in a blob of matter, but, in fact the matter is stored like their normal selves and they can extremely rarely hop between their smaller morphs and their bodies in Z space. If a ship passes too close the person will either, a uh, hop from their morph to their extra mass in Z space and get pulled towards the ship or be more likely get disintegrated by the ship's shields. Andalites, Yerks and Pemalites alike all use Z space as a means of travel and communication. <laughs> Asimovian hyperspace The concept of traveling between stellar systems via the hyperspace drive or jump is described or mentioned in several of Isaac Asimov's short stories and novels written from the 1940s through to the 1990s. Hyperspace seems to enable teleportation on a pre calculated route, the ends of which are in normal space. Although the timeline is not consistent, it appears to start with the development of a hyperdrive from a theoretical construct by the brain, a positronic supercomputer built by U.S. robots. Interplanetary travel has already been developed, and in 2002, when U.S. Robots demonstrates its first primitive positronic robot, it is intended to be used for mining operations on the planet Mercury. Simultaneously, the theories of the spacewarp are developed by a research project under military control, with the assistance of positronic robots, until the first hypership is built at hyper base on an asteroid. Once perfected however, the drive is little used, as it is fearfully costly in energy use and still very risky. But once the existence of habitable planets around the nearer stars to Earth is established also with robot help, the drive is further developed, and over centuries colonies are established on these planets. 
The collection of more and more data on stellar systems and the analysis of stellar spectra allows the compilation of what becomes the standard galactic ephemeris, with which hyperspace navigation see the stars, like dust, becomes less of an art and more of a science. It still requires complex calculations, not until the fall of the Galactic Empire and expansion of the Foundation thousands of years after the first drives were developed would a ship be developed as in Foundation's Edge that allows the total computerization of the calculation of single or multiple hyperspace jumps and the control of the jump without human intervention. Initially there was no description of the hyperspace environment see below. In all of Asimov's writings, where hyperspace travel is described from the viewpoint of the character to the reader, the instant of hyperspace transit is described as a feeling of momentary inside-outness. Hyperspace is defined in Foundation's Edge as a condition rather than a location. In hyperspace, all velocity is zero. Relative to the Einsteinian metrical frame, however, speed is infinite. For navigational purposes, the galaxy is imagined as being real G and imaginary G0. Perturbations such as those experienced by ship in space from the gravitational field around an object such as a planet or even a star are exacerbated in hyperspatial travel, since mass in real space distorts hyperspace in an equal measure. Jumping near to a gravitational mass is likely to make the resulting exit from hyperspace to be highly uncertain, with the level of improbability decreasing as the inverse square of the distance to the nearest gravitational well. As a condition, hyperspace translates objects as a phased tachyon wave, which once collapsed restores the objects to their meson composition instantaneously. This is supposed to happen with a minimum of energy expenditure. While it is necessary for a ship to have nuclear engine to produce the hyperspace drive field to hurl a vessel through hyperspace, nearly all of the energy expended is recovered as the hyper field collapses. Also, there is no Cherenkov radiation flash associated with re-entry from hyperspace. Asimov describes the re-entry in several stories as, "...the ship winked into existence". In Nemesis, Asimov further explores the concept of hyperspace. The space colony rotor uses hyper-assistance to travel at speeds hovering around the speed of light, transitioning in and out of hyperspace. Also in Nemesis, a group of explorers use a spacecraft named the Superluminal to travel faster than light to a nearby star system by means of moving into and out of hyperspace. During the voyage, the captain of the spacecraft discusses that during the transition into and out of hyperspace, for a fraction of a second, part of the vessel is in regular spacetime and the other part is in hyperspace, possibly, but rarely, resulting in grave danger. A scientist on the superluminal determines that in hyperspace gravity acts as a repellent force rather than as an attractive one. Babylon 5 In the American science fiction television series Babylon 5 (1993–1998), hyperspace is treated as an alternative dimension where the distances between spatial bodies are significantly shorter. The primary energy expenditure in hyperspace travel is the act of jumping into hyperspace. While in hyperspace itself, ships use their normal propulsion systems and interstellar travel is enabled by the shortened distances. 
Ships must either use jump gates, which are artificial constructs that create a rift into hyperspace, or they can use their own jump engine. The latter is usually restricted to large vessels, as opening a rift requires a staggering amount of power. Jump gates are used by larger vessels whenever possible, to save energy. Hyperspace in Babylon 5 is devoid of useful features, with no points of reference. Therefore, ships have to use the hyperspace beacon system. A network of transmitters located in known points in real space usually jump gates in order to navigate. If a ship travels off the beacon network, it will become lost in hyperspace. Babylon 5 is slightly unusual in that ships in hyperspace require no energy fields to protect themselves, so an object ship, device, that becomes lost in hyperspace can theoretically drift forever, and be rediscovered millennia later this has been used as a plot point. Hyperspace also has currents, which will pull a disabled ship off the beacon network in a relatively short period. While the hyperspace background appears to the naked eye to be a reddish, black, stormy environment in the TV series, this is inconsistent with Babylon 5 science stated elsewhere. The Technomage trilogy states that hyperspace should have no color or other visual aspects. According to the trilogy, it has yet to be determined why the naked eye sees anything at all in hyperspace. Hyperspace has strong boosting effects on those with psionic powers, and allowed the Sakor to station their mothership far off the beacons to remain hidden without getting lost. A jump point allowing entry into hyperspace from normal space is characterized by a yellow-orange-red whirlpool, while jump points for ships emerging from hyperspace are characterized by a blue whirlpool. This is a result of the red shift of the light's wavelength moving away from the observer as the portal is opened into hyperspace and the blue shift of the light's wavelength moving towards the observer as the portal is opened from hyperspace. However, there seems to be multiple ways to enter and exit hyperspace as shadow vessels are seen entering and exiting by appearing to simply fade away, and some of the other first ones have other visual effects associated with hyperspace travel, assuming they use hyperspace at all. Battles in hyperspace are infrequent and avoided, it appears that most such battles in history have ended disastrously for both sides. Jump gates in Babylon 5 can be opened in gravity wells and even atmospheres, although the practice is extremely dangerous due to the jump gate quickly destabilizing with all the gas being sucked in and violently exploding. Even worse is to form a red jump gate inside a blue jump gate, as the resulting shockwave can destroy even a shadow battleship if caught unaware, and few ships capable of generating a jump gate are capable of outrunning the shockwave as well. Also known as the bonehead maneuver. In the Babylon 5 fictional history, Earth acquired hyperspace technology from the Centauri who allowed humans use of their pre-existing jump gates. Earth used these already established jump gates to explore the galaxy, and presumably later researched the ability to build their own jump gates. By the 23rd century, larger Earth ships have the ability to create their own jump point without the use of a jump gate. No specific metric has ever been given to exact hyperspace distances in the Babylon 5 universe, and series creator Straczynski has stated on at least one occasion that distances are not linear. The Vorlons were able to take a piece of hyperspace and fold it onto itself like a pocket and use it as a hiding place. Anything inside the pocket is apparently almost invisible to sensors and the naked eye. 
In the spin-off series Crusade, there is a scene where the crew of the Excalibur encounter several large jellyfish-like entities in hyperspace, resulting in one of the aliens attempting to mate with the ship. Constructs can also be established in hyperspace to serve as hiding places, like in The Well of Forever. In Babylon 5, The Lost Tales, Voices in the Dark, Quantum Space, is introduced, which allows travel which is twice as fast, but causes disorientation when entering. It is leftover Vorlan technology. Topic: <laughs> Battlestar Galactica reimagined. In Battlestar Galactica, the FTL drive is a propulsion technology that allows spaceships to achieve superluminal travel. It functions along the basic principles of a jump drive, with a ship disappearing from its initial location and reappearing instantaneously in a new location. In the miniseries 2003, some crew members are shown reacting with nausea and or vertigo when undergoing a jump, though no harm appears to come to living beings even after many jumps. Making a jump eventually proves damaging to the ship's armor and structure in later episodes, after several years of continual combat and metal fatigue have taken their toll on the elderly ship. An FTL jump can be executed in the gravity well of a planet indeed, Galactica jumps in and out of a planet's atmosphere in the episode, Exodus, Part 2. Nonetheless, it is preferred not to jump too close to a planet, not necessarily because of any physical limitations, but because if the coordinates are calculated wrong there is a risk that a ship might jump too close to the planet and crash into it, or reappear within the planet this happens to a raptor in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens. Further, a BSG FTL drive can theoretically travel anywhere in the galaxy. The limiting factor is not the drive itself, but the finite distance that the navigation computer is able to safely calculate a jump trajectory. More advanced computers are able to calculate longer range jumps, e.g., the Cylons have better computers and have an effective jump range at least three times that of the Colonials. The extreme distance that a safe jump can be plotted is called the red line, and while a vessel might jump a theoretically infinite distance beyond that, it is possible the vessel could end up jumping inside a star, asteroid, or other space debris. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Colony Wars, Red Sun. In the PlayStation game Colony Wars 1997, jump gates are purple, whirlpool-like structures that allow the player's ship and presumably larger craft to be rapidly transported to other areas. Jump gates are temporary, projected by unknown means, allow only one craft through, and collapse after use. It is possible to interrupt one of these jumps, forcing the spaceship in question to re-enter normal space at a different location. When jumping, the spacecraft is surrounded by a light that comes from all directions. This light shifts through the entire visible spectrum repeatedly. Massive warp holes also appear in some missions, these look like black holes with a massive, white accretion disk swirling around the center. Warp holes are long-lasting, and may be permanent. They allow vast numbers of spacecraft through. <laughs> the culture 
In the Culture Universe in the Books by Ian M. Banks 1987 reality is described as being formed of nested five-dimensional hypersurfaces. The real space of our forms a four-dimensional layer, enclosing a younger and slightly smaller antimatter universe and in turn enclosed by an older and slightly larger universe. The gap between our universe and the smaller universe below it is called infraspace, and the gap between our universe and the larger universe above it is called ultraspace, collectively these are referred to as hyperspace. The boundary between hyperspace and other universes is called the energy grid, and is usually impassable though in accession one group of aliens are able to travel between universes in order to escape the heat death or big crunch of their original home. In the book Consider Phlebas it is described, as viewed from a ship, as a vast and glittering ocean seen from a great height the sun burning on a billion tiny wavelets." It is then described as having a smooth black blanket of cloud, suspended high above the ocean. The reader is then told to keep the sparkle of the sea despite the fact that there is no sun. The cloud is then described as having many sharp and tiny lights, scattered on the base of the inky overcast like glinting eyes, some singular some in pairs, or in larger groups." Ships travel through hyperspace by using traction with its irregularities the waves. The sparkles on the ocean are the ship's source of power, while the sharp lights on the cloud are stars. Black holes are described as resembling water spouts. Navigating hyperspace in a gravity well is extremely difficult and dangerous, and ships will only attempt it in dire circumstances, such as the culture mind that, facing destruction during the culture, Iderin War of Consider Phlebas, not only navigates a gravity well but also exits hyperspace within the confines of a subsurface tunnel network. Dune A different depiction of hyperspace travel is found in Frank Herbert's novel Dune In the Dune milieu, space is «folded» using a complicated distortion technology. Travel is nearly instantaneous but very dangerous because of the extremely complex calculations required, compounded by the fact that computers are forbidden by religious decree. There are no personal ships capable of hyperspace travel in the universe of Dune. The Spacing Guild performs all hyperspace travel using their highliners equipped with Holtzman drives. This monopoly gives the guild great power. The guild's navigators megadose on the addictive substance melange, found only on the planet Arrakis. Melange's unique properties enhance human prescience and allow the navigators to find a safe path through space, although in such large amounts it also physically mutates the navigators. The power granted to whoever in the universe controls Arrakis and its spice is an ongoing theme of the series. How the space travel was done before the melange is explained in the Legends of Dune trilogy by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. The trilogy describes the time shortly before and during the discovery of space folding. In these works the discovery of space folding is attributed to Norma Senva, who goes on to become the first prescient folded space navigator. Prior to this, although described in The Machine Crusade as outracing photons, vessels still took weeks or months to cross between even the closest stars. Topic. Farscape 
In the Farscape series (1999–2003), the Leviathan living ship Moya has a natural ability known as Starburst, which allows it and anything close to it to travel great distances in a short amount of time. Starburst depletes a Leviathan's energy and thus cannot be used frequently. It has been said that during Starburst the ship is riding the seams between universes." Another travel technology that forms an important plot thread is wormhole travel, which few races master. Generic FTL technology is called, "...hetch drive", but is never stated how it works, hetch apparently being some equivalent of, "...c". Different factors of hetch are mentioned hetch 5. On one episode it stated that Einstein was wrong because the Hetch drive defies the theory of relativity every time it's used. <laughs> <laughs> Free space universe Free Space Universe is depicted in a series of space combat simulation video games developed by Volition, Inc. It includes Descent, Free Space, The Great War 1998, and Free Space 2 1999. An alternative plane enabling FTL travel in the Free Space Universe is called Subspace. Two types of jumps are possible. First, an intrasystem jump can occur between two points in a star system. Most small, space-faring vessels are equipped with motivators capable of these short jumps. The presence of an intense gravitational field is required, prohibiting travel beyond the boundaries of a star system. Second, ships can jump from system to system via naturally formed subspace nodes, connecting systems in a web-like node network. The vast majority of subspace nodes are extremely unstable, forming and dissipating in nanoseconds. Other nodes have a longer lifespan, existing for centuries or millennia before collapsing. The jump nodes sanctioned by the Galactic Terran Vasudan Alliance for Interstellar Travel are expected to remain stable for many years. Intersystem jumps through subspace represent a very quick method of travel. Journeys that would take years or even centuries at light speed are only a matter of hours or days when traveling via subspace, although it's not clear exactly how long they take. Elite and Frontier Developments Universe In the video game Elite 1984, written by David Braben and Ian Bell, travel between different star systems is accomplished by entering a realm called Witchspace. Travel is instantaneous but there is risk of the jump being intercepted by a malicious race of aliens called Thargoids who have the ability to hover in witch space and force the player into combat. This could lead to the player being left stranded with not enough fuel to complete the witch space jump they had initiated. Frontier, Elite 2 1993, and First Encounters 1995, depicts a rather classic type of hyperspace, traversing several light years through hyperspace jumps takes days or weeks, depending on the type of vessel and hyperdrive. For the player, this time passes instantaneously. The jumps consume fuel in direct proportion to the distance traveled and the empty mass of the vessel. The destination is always some distance away from large masses in the target star system. In systems of one medium-sized star, such as Sol, typically around 10 astronomical units, more in systems with a large white star or multiple stars. A hyperspace cloud is created in the entry and exit points. 
These can be analyzed by those wishing to intercept and destroy the jumping ship, as a faster ship can reach the destination sooner. Sometimes, more often with engines that have not been maintained properly, mis-jumps occur, which leave the player in interstellar space, where the ship will be forever stranded if sufficient fuel to reach a star system is not available sub-light drive cannot be used to reach nearby stars, even if this were physically feasible. Due to the danger of mutations caused by the powerful engines, hyperspace jumps are impossible due to built-in restrictions in the engines near large populations around 15 km from an inhabited planet's surface or any large space station. In Elite Dangerous 2014 by David Braben's indie software company, Frontier Developments, the hyperspace method remains mostly faithful to the previous two incarnations of Elite. In Elite Dangerous the hyperspace engine is called a frame shift drive and jumps always exit within a few light seconds of the largest astronomical body in the target system. This would usually be a main sequence star but in some star systems, exit points can be around neutron stars or even black holes. The frame shift drive can also be used locally within a system for FTL travel. In this mode, called supercruise, the engine accelerates the ship in a normal way, up to 2000 c. Topic: The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas Adams's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy (1978) opens with the destruction of the planet Earth by Vogans in order to make way for a hyperspace bypass. Hyperspace travel is not clearly described, however. The general impression is that a ship travels for a short time along a bypass through an alternative dimension and emerges at its destination. The sensation of hyperspace travel is described by Ford Prefect as unpleasantly like being drunk. When Arthur Dent asks why that is so bad, Prefect answers, You ask a glass of water. The experience is further described in the narrative as follows. It is at one point stated that one of the reasons for the development of the infinite improbability drive is to allow people to cross vast interstellar distances quickly, without all that tedious mucking about in hyperspace. This was fitted to the starship Heart of Gold. In a sequel, ironically, it is stated that the development of the bistromathic drive is to allow people to cross vast interstellar distances quickly, without all that dangerous mucking about with improbability factors. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Instrumentality of Mankind series. In the Instrumentality of Mankind Future History series by Cordwainer Smith written in the 1950s and 1960s, FTL travel can be accomplished through a hyperspace known as Space 2. <laughs> Space 2 The invention and development of the planoform drive was the turning point of the interstellar instrumentality of mankind and its one direct competitor though generally similar governmental form, the Bright Empire, which the instrumentality eventually defeated. From its name, and subsequent use, a number of different facts can be ascertained about the planoform drive, and its operation. The planoform drive unit collapses spacetime from its conventional four-dimensional form into three dimensions. As time is considered a constant of experience, effectively space loses a dimension. 
The planoform ship has two modes of operation, go and stop. The stop captain is responsible for turning the power on and off for the ship. The GO captain navigates through planoform space by interpreting the stellar patterns captured by sensors during a planoform space fold. During the space fold, the view forward of the ship collapses as third dimension of space, depth, is subtracted. The GO captain is thus able to direct the ship by picking much as user picks a point on a computer screen with a mouse pointer the course of the ship. In the manner of star charts, he uses what are known as lock sheets. The planoform clearly operates by meson tachyon inversion. Ships that imperfectly planoform are said to go milky and disappear from loss of molecular cohesion. Planoform devices are not very large, the Lord Crudelta uses 54 of them, operating in parallel, to lift a planoforming platform the size of Cape Canaveral Space Center's Pad 34B during investigation of Space 3. This implies a diameter of no more than about 50 cm. Planoform ships can take any form. Initially ships were converted from standard interstellar ships of the enclosed hull type. Later, with the advent of pinlighter controlled cats, the game of rat and dragon, see the chapter on history below, planoform ships took on more fanciful forms. An example vessel at the instrumentality's zenith of power, 4,000 years before the rediscovery of man, was shaped like the countryside surrounding, and including the peak of, Mount Vernon. The passengers lived in houses on the ship, with an envelope of air held in place by gravitational force fields. The ship crew quarters and maintenance machinery were housed within the artificial peak. Topic. Space 3 The first transition of Space 3 was by Arter Rambo of Earth 4. He was driven by intense rage a survival trait necessary for the experiment by the Lord Crudelta. Transition across 68,000 light years was instantaneous, and did not require any technology. Space 3 is a further contraction of space from three coordinates into just two. Thus all space is a point, and travel is merely a condition. Planoform devices are necessary for a man to traverse Space 3, operating in tandem as Space 3 is entered. However, there are side effects to moving through space in this way, which affect the traveler, dependent on the emotional charge necessary for transit. These include The drunkboat effect, named in reference to Rambo's description of the first transit. The traveler's nervous system is able to interface with electric and electronic circuitry directly, and effect changes through volition. This effect wears away with time. Space energy re-radiation, in transiting the space condition, powerful and strange energies are re-radiated from the traveler. These can have potent effects on materials, permitting a man of ordinary strength to warp and bend steel with hand pressure alone. These are second-order effects of the drunkboat effect. Paralysis and pain were later counteracted, but unprepared travelers would otherwise experience this if not suitably prepared pre-transit. <laughs> History of interstellar space During the early eras of interstellar travel, crossing open space far from a star presented an incomprehensible danger. Ordinary life forms, even protected within a hull environment, would die horribly for no apparent cause. 
Initially, this danger was met with the creation of the Habermann humans, usually criminals, given cyborg modifications which removed their self-identity and the scanners elite volunteers who underwent a modified form of the Habermann process and served as ship's officers, who could survive this unknown threat unharmed, at the cost of losing most of their senses other than sight. They would crew STL light sail ships, while the passengers were kept in suspended animation. Later it was determined that, if a large number of living organisms clams, specifically, were used as a «living shield», organisms further inward could survive unharmed. With the discovery of Space 2 and the «planoform», Drive. The cause of this mysterious threat was finally determined. Living entities, sometimes referred to as dragons, which existed in space too and fed on life energies. Since these creatures were disrupted and killed by bright physical light, they avoided the areas near stars. Thus, the practice of pin lighting. Developed, ships would be accompanied by smaller vessels piloted by genetically engineered telepathic housecats, who, guided by human telepaths aboard the ships, would attack the creatures which they perceived as enormous rats with miniature nuclear flares. Aside from this, and the strange effects of the first attempts to travel through Space 2 and later, Space 3, little is known about the planoform drive. <laughs> known space The Known Space series by Larry Niven was first introduced in the short story, The Coldest Place. 1964 with FTL travel first mentioned in the novel The World of PTAVVs 1965 Hyperspace accessible to ships equipped with a hyperdrive is a dimension in which all objects apparently move at the rate of 1 light year in 3 terrestrial days Later, in the short story at the core 1966, an alien race called the Pearson's Puppeteers develop the Quantum II hyperdrive which is capable of traveling a light year every 75 seconds. As a publicity stunt to attract investors, they hire a human to pilot the prototype to the galactic core. Prevailing theories hold that attempting to engage a hyperspace shunt within the gravity well of a sufficiently large celestial body causes the drive and possibly the ship to careen wildly into an even higher level of hyperspace, which cannot be reached normally and is thought to cause matter within the hyperspace field to disintegrate though Niven revised this in a later work, Ringworld's Children. According to the new model, other dimensional entities which exist near large masses consume ships which enter hyperspace in their vicinity. Because of this, the only species known to have developed hyperspace on their own are the outsiders, a species whose superfluid helium-based physiology makes them more readily able and inclined to perform experiments in interstellar space. While traveling through hyperspace, any attempt to view anything outside the ship, through a porthole or, as in the short story, Flatlander. 1967, through a transparent hull, interacts with the human optic nerve such as to be perceived as a blind spot. This effect is extremely unnerving to most people, and prolonged viewing can lead to madness. In this connection in Combing Back Through Time by Mike Atkinson, a 2006 Hard SF Novella, quite the opposite visual outcome, albeit a recording, is had by the 360 degree view that a front mounted camera has, from a probe within a described interspace employed in fourth dimensional movement or time travel. <laughs> Topic. 
Macross and Robotech In the universe of Macross and Robotech, first introduced by the TV series Cho Jiku Yusai Macross, hyperspace travel also involves the notion of space folding. Hyperspace folding involves a large hyperspace bubble around the vessel traveling through hyperspace. Everything within this bubble is transported along with the vessel itself to its destination. Thus when Captain Global, Global is forced into making a hyperspace fold from close to the surface of the Earth and fold into behind the Moon, an entire island, its sea, and its inhabitants are caught in the hyperspace bubble and accidentally transported to near Pluto's orbit along with the SDF-1 Macross. Elsewhere in the series, space folds looks as if the ship turns into a beam of energy which disappears as the ship goes into spacefold. The same happened in the 1994 Macross 7 TV series. In other entries in the Macross franchise, spacefolding seems to be a bit more conventional. For instance, in Macross Plus, Isamu Dyson and Yang Newman travel to Earth in a variable fighter modified with a spacefold drive. There, the fold process seems to look like an iridescent tunnel which the ship flies through. More recently on the franchise's TV series Macross Frontier 2008 and Macross Delta 2016, the spacefolding process drastically changed, now the vessels pass to hyperspace through a fold portal. That remains open for some time. Once in hyperspace, this resembles a tunnel, semi transparent of light, through which you can see the stars passing at speed. This tunnel of purple and blue tones appears to be infinitely long, with some visible layers or sections, yet the ships still have a bubble of energy around. Mass Effect In the Mass Effect games universe, there are two ways to move in superluminal speed. The FTL flight faster than light is possible in spacecraft equipped with a warp core and the use of element 0. The quantitative requirements may vary depending on the mass of the vessel and of the desired velocity. To equip a high-mass ship so it can reach these speeds is extraordinarily expensive. They allow the decrease of mass, exceeding the speed of light within the gravitational field generated. This method also allows for low time dilatation. If the gravitational field yields on a superluminal speed, the disaster is inevitable, the ship brutally backs on a subluminal speed and the large excess of energy gives rise to a fatal Vavilov t Cherenkov effect. The motors can operate during 50 hours on average before they reach their saturation point. This limit varies in function of the mass reduction amplitude, a heavier or faster ship will reach its saturation point quickly. The mass relays, they are attributed to the Protheans, a race who had reign on the galaxy 50,000 years ago. They form the relays network which allows to travel instantly in any sector of the Milky Way. A relay creates a corridor without gravity with another relay allowing an instant travel between the both, faster than the FTL flight which takes years or centuries to travel in such distances. There are the principal relays allowing to travel thousands of light years but only in the direction of its twin relay and the secondary relay allowing to travel hundreds of light years, but allow to travel to any other relay in their range. H. Beam Piper 
In all of Piper's novels that employ spacecraft, the ships that travel between stars do so in hyperspace. His hyperdrive works by creating a field that puts the ship into hyperspace, where the ships travel at a constant speed of one light year per hour. Hyperspace navigators refer to distances between planetary systems by the number of hours required in hyperspace to transit between them. Humans suffer no ill effects from entering or leaving hyperspace. Ships cannot see or communicate with each other while in hyper, nor can they be detected in normal space until they emerge back into normal space. There is no time distortion in Piper's version of hyperspace. <laughs> Perry Roden The Perry Roden series of books 1961 onward approaches hyperspace in two ways, at first we see five-dimensional jumps. This was the way to travel through space with FTL technology, and it could be described in the same words as that of Asimov's hyperspace. The passengers suffered pain and distress after each jump. However, unlike Asimovian hyperspace, the hyperspace is explained through the five-dimensional space-time, where the fourth dimension is the normal time and the fifth dimension is the variable existence of time, and with the help of the manipulation of this space-time all factors of time for the travel is eliminated. The second hyperspace technique is called superlinear technology, learned from the phenomena seen by Arconids during the war against the Druffs. After five decades of research, human scientists surrounded ships with a Kalupian bubble, in which it was possible to see Einstein's normal space, but not to be seen by sensors or scanners. Superlinear flights occurred in a libration region between the fourth and fifth dimensions. This allowed the ships to achieve velocities thousands or even millions of times greater than that of light. Thousands of years later, humanity is spread along the many star systems. Then a new third kind of propulsion is developed with the name Dimasexta using extragalactic technology, and achieving billions of times light speed. Dimasexta consists in a kind of hyperfast travel, through a zone existing exclusively between the fifth and sixth dimensions. The only Terran ship able to use Dimasexta drives is the supergiant ship, Marco Polo. A fourth description of hyperspace comes from the matter transmitters. This equipment acted as portals or stargates, with different ranges, proportional to the energy available, allowing travel among the planets of a single system. <laughs> Redshift rendezvous In Redshift Rendezvous 1990 by John E. Stith hyperspace is a layer of space in which the speed of light is 10 m per second. People aboard a passenger craft in this region experience relativistic effects in daily life. Flick a light switch and the room slowly fills with light. Run, and you can create sonic booms. People behind you see you redshifted. Topic. Saga of the Scolian Empire In the Scolian Empire series by Dr. Catherine Asaro, there are two methods. The first method, inversion, is used by ships moving at relativistic speeds. Instead of breaking the barrier of the speed of light, spaceships in primary inversion go around it. By adding an imaginary component to their velocity, or inverting, they enter a superluminal universe, allowing for near instantaneous travel. 
However, because the ship must come close to the speed of light to invert, travel still takes time. In addition, various space-time calculation errors add complications. The scullion's military advantage is due to the pilot's ability to communicate with technology-induced telepathy while in inversion and arrive in tight formation from inversion. This communication is through a rip in space-time, called a Kyle singularity, allowing FTL communication across the separate medium of Kyle space also known informally as cyberspace. Topic. Complex speeds and special relativity In 1996, Asaro published a paper in the American Journal of Physics called, "...complex speeds and special relativity", that gives the mathematical formulation she developed for the fictional star drive used in primary inversion. Describing the idea as a mathematical game, she shows how making the speed a complex number can remove the problems associated with the singularity at the speed of light. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Sins of a Solar Empire. In the game Sins of a Solar Empire 2008, the most popular way of achieving FTL is the phase drive, also called the jump drive. The drive's mechanism is undescribed, but what is known is that 1. the ship is enveloped in a cone of cobalt blue light, 2. travels along a set highway, called a phase lane, and 3. the ships travel through an alternative dimension called phase space", but must be far enough away from a significant gravity well to enter. There are also defense stations called, "...phase inhibitors", which use nanomachines or spacetime distortion to stop the drive from working efficiently, thus preventing a timely retreat. The Vasari Empire can attach a phase drive to a missile, allowing it to pass through shields. These are unaffected by phase inhibitors. There is also a Vasari phase stabilizer node structure that allows ships to travel between nodes as if there were a phase lane connecting the systems. Vasari logistical structures can also raise a phase barrier to reduce damage. Vasari scout ships can disable themselves but become invulnerable for as long as their antimatter reserve lasts. When near a star, it is regenerated faster than it is spent, and there fast battleship", can do that to any ship, itself, friend or foe, for a brief duration. <laughs> <laughs> Star Control 2 In the video game Star Control 2 1992, hyperspace is depicted as a different plane of existence that provides the means of feasible interstellar travel. Entering hyperspace requires propulsion be made to the edges of the solar system away from the star's mass. Inside of hyperspace these same stars are represented as gravity wells or holes in the hyperspace, which suck the ship into normal space when entering it too close. Enemy vessels also generate gravity wells of a much smaller size, resulting in spacefaring civilizations being able to establish territory and patrol it even from ships in hyperspace. The physical laws of hyperspace travel are slightly different from those of travel in normal space. The ship traveling in hyperspace must continuously provide its own propulsion, or the vessel simply stops in normal space. Propulsion is only needed to change the course and Newtonian physics means that once thrust is applied, it will continue in that direction. Hyperspace is represented as a red foggy area with strange artifacts seen moving and twinkling in the distance. 
Note that many of the same properties though not the red color are reflected in Starflight 1986, a game which heavily influenced Star Control 2. Star Control 2 also has another plane of existence known as Quasispace. More difficult to access, the access points in Quasispace lead into several different predetermined locations in hyperspace. One interesting fact is that the ship does not consume any fuel at all while traveling inside quasi-space. Whereas hyperspace is depicted in redness, quasi-space appears a harsh green with a negativity effect on objects. One alien race, the Arilu, has a planet which can only be reached through quasi-space, while another alien race, the ORZ, are rumored to be able to enter and swim through quasi-space. There are also hints that the ORZ can exist in yet another dimension, with quasi-space being above, and this other dimension being below. Star Trek The Star Trek first broadcast 1966 universe equivalent of hyperspace is known as subspace. Although similar in concept to hyperspace, subspace plays a slightly different role in FTL travel. Subspace exists in layers, all of which are below. Normal three-dimensional spacetime much like the different layers of a cake. When a starship is traveling at FTL speeds commonly known as warp, in the Star Trek universe, the ship itself does not enter subspace. Instead, the ship either reacts a steady stream of deuterium and anti-deuterium together, or else taps the massive energy of an artificial quantum singularity in order to power large subspace field generating coils, warp engines. The field known as a warp field extends into subspace, allowing the enclosed starship to travel at FTL speeds while it remains within a pocket of normal spacetime similar in concept to a 20th century hydrofoil and it is this pocket of normal space itself which travels faster than light as the ship sits safely inside the pocket wrapping a spaceship within the warp field prevents the relativistic time dilation normally associated with standard FTL travel and allows interstellar travel to continue in a reasonable amount of time despite warp drive's incredible speed compared to current day travel speed it can still take years to travel across a mere fraction of the galaxy around a year per 1000 light years this was demonstrated in part in the Star Trek – Voyager episode, End Game, in which it originally took the starship Voyager 23 years to travel the 75,000 light years needed to return to Earth. This concept of FTL travel is asymptotically limited by the idea that if the warp field is too strong, the ship itself will be too deeply submerged in subspace, which has negative genetic effects on living things. In addition, at high warp factors the energy required to sustain the field grows exponentially. Among the uses of subspace in Star Trek is as a medium for propagating audio and visual signals at FTL speeds, thus allowing nearly instantaneous communication across vast interstellar distances. This is commonly referred to in the Star Trek world as, "...subspace communication". Star Wars Star Wars has one of the most significant depictions of hyperspace. It was once unknown if it was a parallel dimension or only a metaphor for traveling at the speed of light in real space, 
the normal dimension, as starships that travel into it can be influenced by real space agents, but can bypass walls and deflector shields. In Star Wars, The Last Jedi, it was established that a ship traveling at light speed can crash into a squadron of real space ships, severely damaging them. The role-playing video game Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2003 gives one of the more substantial explanations of how hyperspace travel works in the Star Wars universe. There are established safe hyperspace routes that were scouted out by an unknown species in 30000 BBY 30,000 years prior to the events in the 1977 film Star Wars. These routes made interstellar trade and eventually the establishment of the Republic possible. New routes are almost never scouted out, mostly because the end coordinates might place the traveling ship inside some star or planet. For example, the deep core systems are especially hard to navigate because of the high density of stars. A pilot's skill in hyperspace has a lot to do with how he navigates the tangled web of hyperspace routes that crisscross the galaxy. Traveling through hyperspace requires the aid of either an astromech droid such as R2D2 or R4P9 or a navi computer, navigational computer. Although Jedi are sometimes reputed to be able to travel through hyperspace without reference to navi computers, astromech droids, or existing known routes. Traveling through hyperspace is also apparently quite complex as Han Solo tells Luke Skywalker that, "...it ain't like Dustin Crops, boy." In any case, hyperspace is an extremely fast method of travel, as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke's journey from Tatooine to Alderaan is theorized to have only taken two days maximum, whereas these two planets are separated by half a galaxy or more. Darth Maul took approximately seven hours to travel from Coruscant to Tatooine. The movies, as well as multiple expanded universe sources, show hyperspace as having a mottled, blue and black appearance. An entry into hyperspace shows the stars stretch into starlines, then turn into the mottled appearance. Externally, a ship entering hyperspace is described in Timothy Zahn's novels as displaying a flicker of pseudomotion before disappearing. Like the above-mentioned Star Trek series, Holocom transmissions are featured in Star Wars as long-range, faster-than-light communications signals, sent through hyperspace. The hyperspace speed of a ship is represented by class, an arbitrary and abstract measure. Lower numbers indicate proportionally lower travel time, and thus higher speed. For instance, an X-wing starfighter is class 1. The Death Star is class 3, which means it can travel through hyperspace only one-third as fast as the X-wing. A more standard capital ship such as a Star Destroyer may clock in at class 2, and a civilian bulk freighter at class 4. Very fast ships, with class lower than one, air relatively rare. The remarkably speedy Millennium Falcon is class 0.5, or twice as fast as the X Wing. The Aben Hawk, the primary ship used in the Knights of the Old Republic series, is said to be the fastest in the galaxy, 4,000 years prior to the rise of the Empire. However, at that time, hyperdrive technology was not as well developed. A Class I hyperdrive, the Aben Hawks class, was considered extremely fast. It is stated that it is the only ship capable of breaking the Sith blockade of the planet Terrace, although that may be interpreted as the only ship that was capable and also located on Terrace at the time of the blockade. 
Similarly, the Aben Hawk was used for smuggling prior to the events of the games, just as the Millennium Falcon. Topic: <laughs> Mass Shadows. Within the Star Wars universe, ships can be prevented from entering hyperspace, as well as removed from it, by way of mass shadows. Existing in hyperspace, mass shadows are the hyperspace signatures created by gravity wells of large objects existing in normal space. Mass shadows occur naturally, caused by the gravity wells of large celestial bodies such as, planets, stars, or gas giants. Smaller objects e comets, may also cause mass shadows to occur. Due to their nature, mass shadows can potentially cause the threat of collision if a ship were to drop out of hyperspace and impact with the associated object. This is why hyperdrive engines include a failsafe mechanism to return the ship to real space when encountering such a gravity well. Artificial gravity wells can be produced by gravity well projectors, known as an interdiction field, and can disable hyperspace maneuvers, preventing or removing ships from traveling in hyperspace. The Interdictor class Star Destroyer of vessels employed by the Galactic Empire are equipped with technology to generate gravity wells and are leveraged by the Empire to disable rebel ships attempting hyperspace travel. The Interdictor class cruiser was previously featured as part of the Star Wars Expanded Universe SWEU and declared non-canon with the rebranding of SWEU to Star Wars Legends. However, they have since been restored after being featured in novels part of the new continuity. An Interdictor class cruiser like spacecraft, the Imperial Interdictor, is also seen in Star Wars Rebels and it captures from hyperspace a Rebel starship. <laughs> Sub hyperspace Sub hyperspace. In the novelization of Star Wars, The Force Awakens, is the term used by First Order officers to identify the hyperspace like region in real space in which the phantom energy shot from Starkiller Base travels. The novel also explains that the energy, derived from a kind of dark energy known as quintessence, is visible by characters on planet Takodana due to a strange rip in sub hyperspace. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> StarCraft. In the video game franchise StarCraft, all the main races Protoss, Terran, Zerg and Zelnaga could travel by warp space. The Zelnaga and a tribe of Protoss called Dark Templar could travel by means of the Void, which is a mysterious cosmic phenomenon. The race of Protoss is very advanced with warping and can warp entire buildings, spacecrafts and individual Protoss beings. The Protoss also use an advanced form of warping called mass recall which defies dimensions to summon entire armies or fleets, however, this uses much of their energy reserves. The Terrans use warp drives in their spacecrafts, which allow faster than light travel. The Zerg race could faster than light travel through space in behemoths and leviathans, colossal creatures that were used by the Zerg as space vessels. The leaders of the Zerg, the Overmind and the Queen of Blades were immensely powerful psionic beings that could open warp rifts which allowed accurate instantaneous travel. The Zelnaga race had advanced technology that allowed them to warp travel. Their warp gates allowed instantaneous travel between two points in the universe and thus could travel to distant galaxies.
Topic: <laughs> Stargate In the Stargate universe 1994 most spaceships are equipped with hyperdrives that open up a window to hyperspace. Different races have hyperdrives of varying speeds, a hyperdrive constructed by the Alterans ancients, or by the Asgard would be significantly faster than a Goa'uld hyperdrive. There are two types of hyperdrives, interstellar, which only allows the ship using that hyperdrive to travel between stars in one galaxy in relatively expedient manner, and intergalactic, which allows the ship using it to travel greater distances and at greater speed. The only races shown to use intergalactic hyperdrives are the Tauri, through Asgard hyperdrive engines, for example on the USS Daedalus, the Asgard, the Ancients, Alterans most notably Atlantis, the Asuran human form replicators, the Milky Way human form replicators, the Ori and the Nakai. Most hyperdrives use the fictional substance of Naquita as fuel. Some, including certain Earth vessels, use the highly unstable, but more powerful isotope Naquadria instead. Ancient hyperdrives are powered by one or more ZPMs, whereas the Asgard hyperdrive engines use the Asgard neutronium ion generator, although when installed on Earth vessels they use whichever power source is available, typically a Naquita generator or, in the case of the Odyssey or on occasion the Daedalus, a ZPM. Unlike hyperdrives used in other universes, hyperspace travel in Stargate does not interact with any matter in real space. Therefore, it allows ships to pass straight through any object but not large space-time distortions, such as black holes, in its path. This has been used in numerous escape scenarios throughout the series. The speed of the hyperdrive can be increased by increasing its power by an external or internal source, or by modifying it manually. When the Daedalus is powered by its Asgard hyperdrive, it takes 18 days to travel to Atlantis in the Pegasus Galaxy. However, when the engineers rigged the Zero Point Module ZPM sent for Atlantis Ancient Shield into the system, it took only four days. Earth's Daedalus class battle cruiser the Odyssey is mentioned to have its own permanent ZPM during the war against the Ori, although it is unknown if the ZPM is sent to Atlantis following the Ori's eventual defeat. Several ships can be encompassed in one hyperspace window by expanding the window but it takes a lot more power than usual, it is also possible to land a ship on one that is entering the hyperspace window and travel alongside. This previous is not a problem if someone can install a ZPM, because a fully charged module can procure massive amounts of energy. It has been shown that it's possible to open a hyperspace window in a planet's atmosphere, but it seems to distort space around it. Each species as hyperdrives works on a unique frequency, a fact that the renegade ancient scientist Janus took advantage of when creating the Atero device, a weapon of mass destruction intended to disrupt the hyperspace window generated by any Wraith ship in the galaxy, instantly vaporizing the ship as it entered the window. This device was ultimately abandoned by Janus due to unforeseen, yet catastrophic side effects on the Stargate network, causing active gates to explode, destroying most or all of the planet on which it resides. Hyperspace also has a type of hyperspace radiation which all Wraith ships suffer damage from and as a result must exit out of hyperspace incrementally to allow their organic ships to regenerate their hull from the hyperspace radiation damage. Due to this shortcoming, the Wraith often plan their hyperspace travel in a series of jumps 
in which they simultaneously enter and exit hyperspace as a cluster. Wraith ships are the only ships known to require these pauses in their hyperspace travel as all other hyperspace-capable ships are protected by their energy shielding. In order to reach the full potential speed of their hyperdrive, the Asgard must shunt all power away from shields and weapons. When using the full potential of their hyperdrives, the Asgard can move from one galaxy to another in under two minutes. The ancient ship Destiny uses a different method of faster-than-light propulsion, simply referred to as FTL by the Destiny Expedition. Much of its workings remain unexplained. Destiny's drives, once engaged, must remain active for a minimum of four hours and, upon exiting FTL travel, must remain inactive for a minimum of three to prevent damage to the drives. Unlike sublight and hyperdrives on previously seen ships in both the Milky Way and Pegasus galaxies, Destiny's engines appear to be a single unit which provide both forms of propulsion. This same method of FTL is used of both the ancient seed ships seen in Stargate Universe, and the Alteran City ship seen in Stargate, the Ark of Truth. Besides hyperspace travel, there is, of course, wormhole travel through the stargates that give the series its name. <laughs> Sword of the Stars In the video game Sword of the Stars 2006, each race has its own form of hyperspace, and therefore interstellar travel. Humans, for example, utilize node space, a degenerate form of normal space formed by cracks between areas of heavy gravity such as stars. In node space distances are greatly reduced, allowing ships to use ordinary sublight propulsion and yet still cover distances that would require FTL propulsion if traveling in normal space. Without the special bell drive, nothing can cross between normal space and node space, rendering traveling ships effectively invisible while in node space, though they cannot see what they are traveling toward either. As well, node space fractures form naturally and somewhat randomly, meaning that the shortest path between stars may still be somewhat circuitous. The Hivers do not utilize any form of fast travel, instead employing jump gates to physically connect two or more points in space. Though it takes substantial amounts of time for a ship to travel between stars at sublight speeds, once a jump gate is constructed within an intense gravity field it is essentially next to all other jump gates, allowing instant travel between any worlds in the network. LIIR ships can not use normal drives due to their special requirements, their ships are much more massive than normal due to having to be filled with water, and thus would require enormously larger amounts of power to move. They instead perfect a form of instantaneous teleportation allowing them to transport from one location to another without moving at all. Eventually they can teleport far enough and quickly enough to achieve speeds that are effectively FTL over long distances. The Tarkas are the only race to truly develop an FTL drive. Their ships fold space around them, allowing them to move at faster than light speeds. Zul Slavers, introduced in the expansion Born of Blood, utilize node space in a similar manner to humans. Rather than exploiting natural node space fractures, however, Zul ships rip paths into node space directly. This allows them to travel between stars as they wish, rather than being subject to the whims of nature. 
However, these artificial fractures are unstable and must be continually reinforced or they will collapse, destroying any matter in them at the time. As Zool and humans both use node space in their travel, they may actually contact or intercept each other while in transit. Topic: The Voyage of the Star Wolf. An idea similar to hyperspace, called hyperstate, was introduced by David Gerald in the novel The Voyage of the Star Wolf 1990. In this setting starships used artificially produced gravitational singularities the space-time distortions found at the center of black holes to transition between normal space and so-called irrational space, where faster than light travel was possible. The primary limitation of hyperstate was that the resulting gravitational distortions could be easily detected by other starships, so stealthy movement at faster than light speeds was effectively impossible. Topic: <laughs> Traveler In Traveler, hyperspace is referred to as jump space, an alternate dimension, universe, accessed using a jump drive, which rely on the rare Earth element lanthanum, and which uses an immense amount of power, to create an artificial singularity inside the drive, drives it out of normal space, and then uses hydrogen gas to literally inflate the singularity, creating a bubble of jump space, in which the ship exists. The ship is totally alone in jump space, even if another ship jumps very close but far enough to avoid field overlap, each ship will be alone in their respective bubbles of jump space. A ship in jump space cannot be contacted by any sort of means, even by another ship in jump space. The distance traveled during a jump varies depending on the drive class, which is measured in how many parsecs one jump will carry a ship. The most unusual thing about jumping, traveling through jump space, is that all travel, no matter the distance, takes around a week. This is because that is the amount of time that the bubble of jump space is able to maintain itself, before collapsing, putting the ship back in normal space. Traveling through jump space is done by riding quantum levels, higher levels go faster, and are able to transport ships higher distances. The distance that a ship travels is dependent on what level it uses. Higher class drives use higher levels to travel more distance in a single jump. Velocity is meaningless in jump space, as movement happens by quantum mechanics, but energy is still conserved, so a ship coming out of jump space will have the same velocity and heading as it did when it entered jump space. In addition, it is impossible to change direction or really move in jump space, as any gravity fields, and really any force similar, severely affects the bubble of jump space, and would cause it to, at best, collapse prematurely, putting the ship back into real space. It is for this reason that it is standard procedure for a jump is to form the bubble 100 diameters away from a planet, star or other gravity well. <laughs> Wally. -E. The Pixar animated film Wally -E and its spin off short film Burn E feature a Star Wars like depiction of hyperspace, where spacecraft can travel at very high speeds. The starship Axiom travels in a few seconds from outside the Solar System to the Earth. As a spacecraft travels through hyperspace after a hyperjump, the objects on it appear distorted and all the non-fixed objects fall to the rear of the craft or on the nearest fixed object. 
As the Starliner travels, in the two films, outside the craft there are distorted line-shaped images of stars, similar to the ones in Star Wars, which are used in a parodiac scene in Burn E, as the we can see them in the titular character's visor like the colored stripes on Bowman's helmet's glass in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Topic: Warhammer 40,000. In the Warhammer 40,000 fictional universe created in 1987, human starships are able to enter the warp or the immaterium, a parallel dimension that is the domain of the consciousness of every sentient being in the universe, and also the realm of chaos. Imperial ships, and others, use it for faster than light travel, a relatively unsafe operation due to the warp's unpredictable nature. Ships are known to emerge from the warp many hundreds of light years from their intended destinations, and timewise many Earth years, decades or even centuries after they had been expected to arrive. The time dilating effect means ships can arrive before the date their journey started. The Emperor of Mankind, perhaps the most powerful psyker ever, provides a psychic magnetic north for human-navigated starships attempting to traverse the warp. Called the Astronomicon, it is the only feasible means for navigating the warp, and so making interstellar travel possible for the Imperium. Imperial starships require a special force shield known as the Geller Field, that creates a real space bubble", around the ship when in warp space. In James Swallow's Horace Heresy novel The Flight of the Eisenstein, book 4 of the Horace Heresy book series, a description of the inside of a ship whose Geller field had failed is given, the Tau, however, do not register in the warp and therefore cannot truly enter it. But by studying the warped drives from other species, they developed a method in which their ships dive towards the warp and are then catapulted away, back into real space. While this is much safer than actually entering the warp, it is much slower. The hive fleets of the Tyranids do not travel through the warp but instead rely on small Narvel bio ships which are capable of harnessing a planetary system's gravity from immense distances away to create a corridor of compressed space through which Tyranid vessels can travel towards the system at a swift rate. Whilst slower than proper warp travel, this method is much more reliable. The Eldar and a parasitic sub -race, the Dark Eldar use a system of jumpgates known as the Webway Matrix, which operates using an expansive series of ancient tunnels in the warp that are immune to the influences of chaos or the usual perils of warp travel. However, the scope and nature of the Webway is as yet unknown to the vast majority of mankind. The race of Necrons may have used a similar system at some point in their past, but use an inertialist drive now. <laughs> Xenosaga In the video game series Xenosaga published 1998 for the PlayStation 2 console, people routinely travel long distances in space through hyperspace. Hyperspace in the Xenosaga universe is a realm of alternative space that looks like a long tube or column similar to a wormhole. In this space a starship can accelerate to faster than light speeds without experiencing the time dilation effects normally experienced when approaching the speed of light in normal space. Only spaceships equipped with a special force field can enter hyperspace, because exposure to hyperspace even for short period of time is hazardous to unprotected humans. 
In order to enter hyperspace a ship must go to a specific area in space known as a column area. Column areas are places where ships can safely gate into and out of hyperspace. They can be found all over the universe and are separated by less than a day's travel at sub-light speeds. Navigating hyperspace requires entering a column area and finding a corresponding point within the universe spanning navigation network known as the Unis Mundus Network UMN, the UMN. Transportation Gate Management Facility controls the use of column areas, and clearance must be granted before hyperspace can be entered. <laughs> C.J. Cherries Alliance Union Universe – Compact Series other forms Other forms of hyperspace usually have the same properties, however, some allow travel throughout time as well as space e.g. Doctor Who's Time Vortex. Popular names include warp space, slipstream and subspace. Exospace is a hyperspace-like parallel dimension featured in the Valerian and Loreline comics and in the film Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, where spacecraft travel usually helped by an autopilot to other places in time and space. For some reason, the crew of the spacecraft has to be seated in their piloting pods during the exits from exospace. Slipstream is a method of traveling faster than light in the television series Andromeda 2000 to 2005. According to the show, a gravity field generator drastically reduces the mass of the ship, and then a slipstream drive opens a slippoint which the ship enters. The pilot then navigates the series of slipstream tunnels until they reach the desired slippoint where they exit the slipstream. Slipstream has the unusual property that it cannot be navigated by machine-based intelligence, however advanced. Only organic sentient beings are capable of selecting the correct path. Halo 2001 onward also uses slipstream called slipstream space and generally shortened to slipspace albeit with different capabilities from that of Andromeda Humans using Sha Fujikawa translite engines can tear black holes in known space which quickly evaporate creating a hole in space this puts a human ship into 11 non-dimensional slipspace. Human technology only goes so far, and the ship usually comes out several kilometers off target. Their maximum speed is universally under 1000 c. Covenant ships have drastically more accurate precision in this matter, along with much faster speeds 336,000 c. Halo, Contact Harvest describes it as, "...if one imagined the universe as a sheet of paper, slipspace was the same sheet of paper crumpled into a tight ball." Interspace see also a footnote above under, "...known space series." Niven, in Combing Back Through Time by Mike Atkinson, this is used to step a visual history recording probe through the fourth dimension. Overdrive, in the works of science fiction writer Murray Leinster first SF story, The Runaway Skyscraper, 1919, Overdrive is a method of faster-than-light travel by a field of energy called an overdrive field, first appearing in First Contact 1945. When the overdrive field is activated, the ship then enters a dimensional subspace, moving 30 times faster than light. Most of this power is held in batteries and recharged when the overdrive field is turned off. 
This method of faster-than-light travel is common in his works where faster-than-light travel is used though the stories are not connected in any other way. Spindizi, the Spindizi from James Blish's Cities in Flight series 1955 as well as the Herdal Overdrive in several other novels are described as creating a small space-time bubble in which the spacecraft travels. The ship, therefore, occupies a space-time continuum where effects such as the Lorenz-Fitzgerald contraction do not apply. The space-time created by the Spindizi or Herdal overdrive can be considered a small, self-contained hyperspace. Plain space is the form of faster-than-light travel in the crest of the stars and banner of the stars both 1996 onward series written by Hiroyuki Morioka. It is only accessible via swords, making ones located near star systems of high strategic value. Eschless Funnel, in Arwen Ellis Dayton's Resurrection 2001, the Kinley race has developed a device called the Eschless Funnel, which harvests energy directly from atomic mass. This allowed a normal fusion drive to warp space. Instead of traveling to another dimension, however, the field created an enclave where the normal rules didn't apply. Other space, in the text-based massively multiplayer online role-playing game of the same name, Other Space is a mystical space-folding dimension long believed to only be navigable by trans-dimensional beings called hivers. Governments were required to make treaties with these beings and keep one on board each of their ships in order to make use of the FTL properties of the dimension. Topic. See also. Four-dimensional space. Spacecraft propulsion.